The Keshe Foundation is uh, uh, it's been established to look after all the interests of whatever is developed by me and all the developments of the present and the future will belong to the foundation and the Cash Foundation is based in Holland and it's been set up in the past five years for mainly to protect the intellectual rights and the financial rights of all the inventions and the patents and any literature which is written in the, about the development of the space technology by Cash Foundation or by me as a person and whatever will be developed in the future by within the Cash Foundation. Oh, we developed a lot of things. Um, it is some 40 odd years of research and development. We have changed the course of the space technology where we have made the uh, uh, use of the propulsion obsolete. There is no need for burning fuel the way it's done with the rocket propulsion. We don't see such a thing in the universe. And then we have developed, a, or we are in the process of developing, a one unified medical application, which means one system to see that it can treat all sorts of uh, uh, diseases, cancer, FMS, MS, and all sorts of kind of things. The other side is the development of the materials. We have developed totally new materials, unknown, uh, like uh, CO2 in a solid state at room temperature. And other hand is the development of new energy systems, where you can produce as much energy as you need on demand with a very simple system, where it makes the uh, human race independent of burning fuels. And all these things are not talk, we have systems, we show them and we are developing more and more new systems to make them much easier to be achieved. My name is Mehran Tabakuli Kesh. So I am the founder of the foundation or Stichting. And I have developed the whole technology from basics of the understanding the new concept of creation of gravity and magnetic field of the earth and over some 20-30 years have found parallel applications in medical and different part of the science for the same discovery. The main problem in the world of science was that nobody could understand how gravitational fields are created. So over 30 years of research we have understood how gravitational systems within a system like Earth is done and we made the systems replicate the conditions and we achieved the same uh, characteristics of the, as the Earth, which is a system which holds gravity and the magnetic field at the same time. So we brought the technology and the knowledge into the world of uh, medical application and we've seen how easily certain diseases which have been big problem for the world of science can be reversed or can be helped to be um, re reprocessed as we call it. We brought the same thing to the other side of material and the energy, we see the same operation. The reason that um, you say that no other scientists have to reach to such a point is that a lot of scientists around the world are working to this target. But uh, somehow, working on this um, principle for some over 30 years, 40 years, it was uh, bound for somebody to get there first. And we look at and as it is, we are the first who's done that. Americans are running a very small pro program, or they run a program in 2005 under M2P2. They call Mini Magnet Sphere System, which was done in Washington University. And Americans, other universities have looked such a thing. But we are the first organization which actually can produce a physical system to show the whole operation. The system can be used for different applications. Most of the things which we we thought it's impossible in the universe or to be produced. Now we understand how gravity and magnetic field can be produced at the same time in the same system. It is easy to produce. It's easy to produce a protein out of the fresh air, as you call it, or to produce energy out of a very small system, which can give a few kilowatts or a few thousands of kilowatts at the same time from the same system. The breakthrough comes in understanding how to produce magnetic and gravitational field as a plasma at the same time in the same system in the same part of the same system 
The problem with the world of science has been is that over centuries we saw the effect of magnetic field of the Earth, we call it our atmosphere, or we call it magnetosphere of the Earth. And centuries later, Newton understood the property of gravity, or he explained gravity. If the scientific world or man at the same time would have discovered that the gravity and the magnetic field at the same time would have been in this dilemma which we are at the moment, that we think gravity is a holy grail of the science. Gravity and the magnetic fields are created by the same material in the same place in every dynamic system, be it Earth, be it Sun, be it air, even a galaxy. So what happens in reality is magnetic fields, or what you call magnetosphere of the Earth, is created by the repulsion forces of the field. And the attraction forces are gravity, or they get gravitated. It's like when you have a solid magnet. In a solid magnet, you have a north and south. When you have a north and south, they get attracted. That's gravitation. And when you have north and north, they repel each other. So that becomes the magnetic field or repulsion force. In a plasma, or in the plasma of a proton or an electron, the same thing happens, but in a spherical shape. A dynamic magnetic field, they create magnetic field and gravitational field at the same time. So every object which has got a dynamic magnetic field is always a spherical. We don't see cylindrical objects in the universe which have the gravity and magnetic field. Through the properties of reconnection of magnetic fields, you find uh, most of the objects are spherical and being a spherical they in turn have fields which they interact and they have gravity and magnetic field so what we call magrav is the basis of it what they call anti-gravity is a nonsense there's nothing called anti-gravity and at the same time you cannot have gravity and have not have a, a magnetic field or we call a magnetosphere so the two are always together one is the repulsion and one is attraction. And the systems which we have developed and tested confirms the correctness of theory. The way we have uh, found how we can use this knowledge in the medical application is that as a scientist, as a physicist, I treat the body as a galaxy. In understanding how uh, matters, like what we call as matters or entities like Earth or Sun operate within a galaxy and why they have certain positions and the position don't change. The same thing happens in a smaller scale in the atoms and molecules which they make the cell of the human being. If you understand the concept of creation of magnetic field and gravitational field and how they position uh, themselves in respect to each other and how the matter or entity which has both positions itself in respect to the other of the same then you can go into dimensions of uh, uh, body, treat the body as a galaxy, then you can allow the body to re go back and reset itself to the position as it was before an illness sets in. So the systems we make is rigid, uh, rigid and is a copy of the body. The body of the person is flexible, so it tries to go back to its origin. So that's how a lot of illnesses can be help to be recycled, what we call it. We don't call it treating, we don't call it curing. It's setting the body back to its original position or we call processing it. This technology on the medical side has been tested from 2004-2005 and at the moment we are running some 30-40 trials literally around Europe, America, uh, Canada, Middle East, uh, Far East and uh, in Belgium, in Holland, in, Ge in uh, England and we are learning that and we are getting to the point that we can make one system to be able to um, be programmed to reset any body, any physical body from any illness and uh, the signs are that we are very correct and uh, the process is still going on. I am born in a house where radiation was part of the bed and breakfast. It was part of the food of the family. My father was part of the 
Philips International in medical x-rays. So I was introduced to the world of um, radiation at a very young age, seeing operation of the x-ray machines and everything else. And then I went to England to study as a um, nuclear engineer. Uh, graduate from Queen Mary College as a nuclear engineer, specialized in uh, reactor system control and technology. I could not see any future for what I wanted to do within the industry, so I worked independently financing the technology and at the same time researching it. And since 2002, more or less full time, I spent on development of the technology. But it's been a long haul process. We have communications from 14th of June, two th sorry, 14th of June, 1985, with NASA, where we proposed this technology, and uh, we have um, developed the technology over years in stages, but in past five or six years has gone totally in a very meteoric uh, scale up. That we are literally developing everything and different aspects of the technology on a daily basis. The whole of science will change from what we know in one way or another in the very near future. As I gave a presentation to scientists in um, institute or organization known as IMEC in 2005, uh, a scientist who was part of the directors of one of the subsidiaries of this establishment, he was walking in the room up and down. We asked him, why are you pasting? He said, we were talking recently that very soon somebody will discover how gravity is done and the whole ball game changes. And now this guy is here and explaining it how it's done. You have to understand that this technology has been evaluated by University of Brussels, Flemish side, VUA, by Professor Van Avermeer initially for the assessment for the Flemish or Belgium uh, federal or governmental side of the aerospace. And they said initially, yes, the technology is correct in feasible, it's feasible that it produces energy. Then the technology was assessed by independent um, commercial entity to see if it can, a copy can be made. And they said, yes, it can be done. Then uh, we start building prototypes, different prototypes over four or five years. And then uh, we saw the first lifts in Belgium in mid-2006, 2006, 2006, 2007, it was carried on. And in 2008, with the invitation from the Iranian government, we built the first proper gravitational external movement in Tehran, which has been tested. And now the system is very floating and we can fly, we can move any movement we like. And as we have said very recently at the Cash Foundation Forum, if the Russian Space Agency and the American NASA Space Agency will not be able to assist their um, astronauts, which, is, uh, which are in the space lab, as the Americans don't have any more space program till 2020, and the Russian rocket has recently exploded, they are not launching anything till they find out what's happening. We are so advanced that we are prepared to intervene and if need be to bring the astronauts back. And we are preparing ourselves for such a demonstration. We have shown the system to the scientists at University of Kent. They have seen the physical um, system. We have shown the videos of the weight reduction and lift to the scientists and officials from the Belgian government and within the Belgian structure. Uh, in past three years, they know exactly what it stands. The Americans know what it is there and the, with the Canadian government when they arrested me in Canada last year for 11 days, they have downloaded the whole thing. They know it's very true and very correct because in the package of the documents they downloaded and they copied, there are videos of the lift and weight reduction. They know it's correct and it's a copy of what was developed in Tehran. And uh, why did they uh, capture you or like what were they looking for? Uh, nobody knows how. The reason that I was arrested on board of a plane on a transit from Brussels to Mexico City uh, on transit in Toronto airport, nobody knows. I was interrogated at one stage or 
two days, three days, up to 12 uh, agents and scientists at the same time in the airport of uh, Toronto Airport from 9 o'clock in the morning till walk on 1 o'clock the next day on three days con consecutive days and they've copied everything in my suitcase in my dossier which I was carrying as a scientific trip and uh, they were so stupid that they left some of the papers and their documentation they were in such a hurry to copy in my suitcase so when I returned I opened my suitcase because they just received me on the plane back to England to Belgium uh, and we put all the documents on the internet so uh, all the Canadian government document officials copying my things uh, all the bags what they had in their hand keys uh, what do you call it um, internet keys um, hard disks how many hard disks they, they stole they copied everything it's all on the internet. We actually got physical left all their documents saying certified that my passport, all my documents are carried as correct. It's all is in our hand and the opposition. But like, uh, aren't there like a lot of people who have like problems with you or like the way uh, you're gonna handle things or it's against their business as well? We don't have problem with nobody. The, the thing is, uh, as um, American naval officer, high-ranking officer, told me in Seoul, in Hamilton Hotel in 2008, when they asked me to attend a meeting to see their officials. Uh, they said the problem with me is that I don't talk. As a scientist, I'm not a theoretical physicist. What I talk, I make systems that shows the reality of what I talk. I'm an engineer. So